Okay, on this example, we're given a cost function, and we want to find the average cost. All right, or actually figure out which quantity we're going to be able to minimize the average cost. So that average cost is important. Average cost can be computed as cost divided by the, the quantity, the number that you actually produce. All right, so in our case, I'm going to use C of Q divided by Q. It's not just the cost, it's the average cost. So that's why we're dividing by Q. So in our case, I'm going to go ahead and fill in for C of Q with 160 plus 2Q plus 0.1Q squared, the function that we were given, divided by Q. So if you're okay with it, I'm going to refer to this from here on out as AC for average cost of Q. All right, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is we want to find a minimum, right? So we want to find uh, critical values or critical numbers. To do so, we'd like to take the derivative of this average cost function. But before we actually do the derivative, I'm going to rewrite this to help us out because I don't like using the quotient rule. So I'm going to first split this apart, make this three individual little fractions by taking that denominator. It's a monomial, so we're allowed to do this and placing it underneath each one of those terms from the numerator. Okay, so took that denominator, split it apart, put one with each of those terms. And remember, we're allowed to do this. We've used this a whole lot more in the opposite direction, I'm sure, where you had a common denominator between fractions. You're allowed to put them together over that common denominator. We're just using that in reverse. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is use this function and rewrite it. I'd like to use my power rule, All right, to take the derivative. So I'm going to rewrite the first one as q to the negative first power, right? If it was q to the positive first in the denominator, we can move it up to the numerator, make it the negative first. The middle fraction, I have q in the numerator, q in the denominator. So that's going to reduce down and make a 1. So I have 2 times 1 is 2. Plus, now in the, the third fraction, I have 2 q's in the numerator and only one in the denominator. So as I simplify down, I'll still have one q left up in the numerator. But I also bring along that constant, the point one q. All right, so far it's just been reducing down our average cost. The next thing we'd like to do is actually take the derivative and get working on finding critical values. So the derivative here, using the power rule, is going to be negative 160 q to the negative second derivative of 2, it's a constant, so it's going to be 0 plus 0.1. All right, now this is negative 160 over q squared, right? Making it positive again by moving it down to the denominator. And when we're thinking about critical numbers or critical values, those occur whenever the derivative is either equal to 0 or undefined. Now, we could get a critical number by thinking, well, if I put in a 0 for q, we're dividing by 0, and it would be undefined. But that's not going to help us out in this problem. So instead, what I'm going to suggest is let's go ahead and set it equal to 0 and work on solving down. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and subtract the point 1, move it to the other side. And then I can't solve for q while it's stuck in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by q squared. Now on the left-hand side, the q comes out of the denominator, right? Multiplying and dividing by the same thing works out really nicely. So we're going to be left with negative 160 is negative 0.1q squared. My next goal is to be isolating that q squared. So I'm going to go divide by negative 0.1. That'll give us positive 1600 on the left-hand side equals q squared on the right side. All right, multiplying and dividing by the same thing. And I'm going to finish this up and get q all by itself by taking the square root of both sides. Now, I'm not worrying about the positive and negative in this case. And I'll tell you why. Um, because Q stands for quantity. It doesn't make sense that you would be manufacturing a negative quantity, right? We're looking at average cost. You wouldn't manufacture a negative quantity. So our ideal value, we're thinking this critical value of 40. How can we verify that, though? Well, we can verify it using the second derivative test. 
or the first derivative test if we wanted to. So what I'm going to do is use the second derivative test. Looking at the first derivative, I'm going to calculate its derivative, so the second derivative. And we can use the power rule to do that, right? We can bring the exponent down in front, multiply. Uh, negative 160 times negative 2 makes positive 320. Reduce the exponent by 1, and then the derivative of 0.1 is going to be 0. Now this really means the same thing as 320 over q to the positive third. Still our second derivative. So if we wanted to evaluate that at 40, we would say ac double prime of, sorry, 40. It's going to get plugged in there is going to equal 320 divided by 40 cubed. Overall this is going to be positive and that's really all we care about is it's positive which tells us our graph at 40 is concave up. Concave up graphs have this sort of look going to them so they're going to have a minimum at that quantity. All right, so hopefully this helps you out as you're trying to come up with average cost, make the function, take the derivative, find critical values, and then it's never a bad idea to test these just to double check and make sure you're actually finding a minimum when you're looking for it or a maximum when you're looking for that.